Once again, as the MGM crime reporter, it is my privilege to bring you another episode in our Crime Does Not Pay series. For obvious reasons, the events and characters depicted herein are fictitious. May I present Mr. Jack Sampson, special agent in charge of a field division office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Our war program, the most unprecedented in history, calls not only for the production of tanks and guns, planes and ships, but also for the building of a defense against enemy agents within our borders. Agents who once again threaten, as they did in 1917. Let us review a typical case that began in the early hours of November 29th, 1941. In a large industrial plant where a quantity of ferromanganese, and all vitally essential in the manufacture of machine tools, was awaiting the furnace. <laughs> Fortunately, only one storage bin went up. If the rest of that ferromanganese had been destroyed, our production schedule would have been in pretty bad shape. Yeah. That siren must have frightened him off before he got to the other bins. That's what I figured, Mr. Sampson. Our lights picked him up when he was halfway over the fence. We fired, but... So you've got nothing that might help in a possible identification, huh? He was too far away. I see. Did you find anything? No, whatever explosive was used destroyed itself. Uh, that manganese was a secret shipment, wasn't it? That's right. Who handled it? Five of my most dependable men. They wouldn't talk. Sometimes, Mr. Harmon, a man might talk without meaning to. Creed, I want to see those five men right away. Right. Where do you get shaved? At Joe's. He's at Fifth and Adams. Patronize any bar rooms? A couple. The Circle and Max place. Where do you eat? Usually just across the street from the plant at the Elite Cafe. Mm -hmm. Who's your barber? I shave myself. Say, what's all this about? I told you I don't talk about my work. Well, the same one or two of you might have dropped an idle word that was picked up by some big-eared bartender or bellhop. Now, let's get on with the questions. Although no official statement has yet been made regarding the early morning explosion at the Harmon factory, plant authorities indicate strong reason to suspect sabotage. Federal investigators are still gathering evidence at the scene. And now imagine people living in America doing things Today's like that. Today's forecast. It's outrageous, Southwest madam. Forecast. In another country, such people are stood up against the wall and shot. Please excuse me, madam. I want it in the office. Set, ma'am. Thank you. Continue with that. Well, Ziggy, what happened? Something went wrong. I just got through planting the charge in the first storage bin when the alarm system went off. So the Harmon plant remains open while the FBI swarm all over the place. Well, I suppose that ends our assignment here. Our superiors will decide that. days this stupid American democracy will be jolted out of its complacency. We will stay and finish our work. In the meantime, we must act with great caution. We can no longer meet like this. Bueller, you will continue in your present situation. Her name is Bueller Anderson. She's a waitress at the Elite Cafe and the only good lead we have among the daily public contacts of the five men who handle that manganese shipment. What about her? Well, certain references she gave her employment bureau were fictitious. I, I checked further, I found that snapshot in her room. I had an expert in architecture break down the background. Now, this is a transparency enlargement of the snapshot's background. These domes, arches, indicate that the style of architecture is Byzantine. Now, notice this feature here, what appears to be the base of a column. This is the Mosque of St. Sophia in Istanbul. What appears to be the base of a column is actually the face of this minaret. Obviously, this snapshot was taken in front of that mosque. Have Washington telephoto it to the Turkish police. 
Turkish intelligence advises subject of picture Bula Binviko, born Serbia, 1909. Engaged in subversion, Istanbul, prior to current war. Shall I pick her up? No, not yet. We've got to find out who her connections are. Now how about getting me a job in that place? Oh, no, we can't risk it. After that explosion, she'd be suspicious of any new face she saw in that cafe. We've got to watch her 24 hours a day. That's Benson and Andrews. They're both mechanics. That's Paul Green. What department? He doesn't work at the plant. He runs a small trucking business in the neighborhood. Benny! Paul! I got it. The contract? Yep, Harmon signed it. Boy, what a break. I'm starting tonight using all four trucks. Swell. Yeah, say, I got a phone and tell the wife. Yeah. And here's the phone, Moocher. <laughs> okay, kid. Keep the change, Bueller. Oh, thanks, Benny. Be seeing you. Right. She is again. The wrong move yet. The size of this hole suggests that they intended to use a demolition bomb. Undoubtedly set to blow up the machine tools, these trucks would have hauled tonight. Now here's Benny McDonald. Mm -hmm. Paul! I only saw him this afternoon. At the Elite Cafe. That's right. I, I bumped into him just as I got through eating. What'd you talk about? Oh, told me about his good luck. But the plant was going to start using his trucks tonight. Who waited on you? Beulah. A Beulah Anderson. Mm -hmm. Could she have overheard the conversation? Sure, she was right there all the time. Thanks, Benny. All right. She's getting information out of that cafe, all right? We've got to find out how. Nothing yet. Keep at it. Look, honey, I'm awful sorry, but I gotta stand you up Friday night. Yeah, we're working, loading some freight for Dunson up at the side. I'll see you Saturday. Same crowd. Gee, I'm sort of hungry myself. See what they got, Mark. All right, let's have a look. Uh, first get a beef. Horseradish sauce, grenadine of pork, sour broughton, potato pancakes, corned beef and cabbage. Sour broughton and potato pancakes, huh? Corned beef for me. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Two bits are out of sour broughton. Okay, you got a bet. Mm. Grenadine of pork, hamburger, and onions and potatoes. Brisket of beef, horseradish sauce, sauerkraut, potato pancakes, corned beef, and cabbage. 
Well, that's funny. Proud of nothing. Now, this menu reads the same as the other. The only difference is a few lines have been transposed. Say, maybe they... Right. You get headquarters. Here, grinders, by rail, Friday, Dunstan. That outfit knows as much about what's going on at the plant as I do. Apparently. Mr. Sampson, every one of those gear grinders represents hundreds of hours of skilled handwork. They've got to get to the airplane works at Dunstan. They're depending on them to tool up a new production unit. Don't worry, they'll get there, all right. But not by railroad. Hello, Ziggy. Anatol. I'm shipping a valuable quantity of cosmetic supplies by railroad to Dunstan Friday. I've consigned them to you. I'll be expecting it. The merchandise is in great demand. You should have no trouble disposing of it. We'll dispose of it. Clinic fix it up. Yes, sir. See you when I get back, huh, Mike? I'm sorry, Mr. Harmon. I... It's all right, Bennett. I'll send Mr. Sampson. Good. Get a patrol on the highway in advance of the trucks throughout the entire trip. Report to me regularly and good luck. Shall I fill it up? Thanks. Maybe it'll help me cool off. <laughs> Hiya, honey. Waiting long? You know the show's out at 12. That's my third cup of coffee. Sorry, we had a late loading job. Mike, your hand. It's just a scratch. What happened? You were hurrying, trying to load some of those trucks, and that dumb kid brother of yours shoved a little too hard on one of those gear grinders. Let me see it. Honey, I says there's nothing to worry about. Come on, let's get going. Leaving 20 minutes before a regular quitting time. Let's go. The cab is slowing down. 700 block Orchard Street. He's pulling to a stop in front of a darkened store. She's getting out. The cab's pulling away. Walking toward the store. She's admitting herself. Cover the place, we'll join you. Okay. They changed plans. Those gear grinders didn't go by railroad. They left by truck early this evening. Who talked? A loader. I heard him tell his wife. The American mouth is ideally big. Long distance? Give me York Flats 306. Thank you. Ziggy may already be on his way to the railroad trestle. She went in there. Come on. every five minutes for the next 20 minutes. Thank you. You remain here those 20 minutes. If the call comes through, tell Ziggy I'm on my way to join them.
is the blind. Their headquarters must be close by. Go through every place on the block and round up everybody that was in that cafe tonight. Right. It'll be okay. Bad? Nah, just a few more minutes. Boy, that thing is traveling. Yeah, he's headed for trouble, sure. All clear, south of Grayport. All clear. Was Bueller around when you said anything at all about the plant? What do you think I am, a dope? I'm smart enough not to talk about my work. Anyway, I was only in the place a minute. Did you talk about hurting your hand? I asked him. Did he tell you how he hurt it? He said he got it caught between the wall of a truck and one of those, um, uh, one of those things. What things? A gear grinder. That's it. Contact Freed. Stop the trucks. Mike, Benny's driving one of those trucks. Those G-men are a little late in their check bag. Just a couple of minutes. Hands it off that speed maniac. Keep me covered. Right. Reed, don't turn around. Samson calling Freed. Samson calling Freed. Come in, Freed. Samson calling Freed. Come in, Freed. Samson calling Freed. Samson calling Freed. Come in, Freed. Ditch that car. Samson calling Freed. Come in, Freed. Check the truck schedule. Well, they ought to be between Grayport and Gatestown. Operator. Operator. Federal Bureau of Investigation Emergency. Give me the Gatestown Police Department. How much longer? Just a plunger hook up and we're ready. Keep going, it's Griffin Auto. You were right, FBI. We were scouting ahead of the trucks. Take them undercover. Keep your motor running for an instant getaway. And when we blast, blast them too. Right. Gatestown Police, Mr. Sampson. Patrolling north of Gatestown. No sign of trucks. Hurry, this may be them. May as well enjoy a good look at your last show. Get out. Sorry to bust up your show, mister. 
Your president has said this war will be won by industrial production. To speed this victory, wartime industry is now protected by every precaution your government's vigilance can affect. You, the citizenry of America, constitute the first line of industrial defense. Be on guard. Build a wall of silence around your business, your activities. And at all times, exercise the caution of thinking twice before talking once. Thank <laughs> you.